Today's guest is Helen Wan, debut author, new mom, and associate general counsel at Time Inc. in New York. Helen's novel, The Partner Track, is an account of outrageous gender bias and racism in corporate America. It's compelling from the first page, sometimes laugh out loud funny, and all in all, an absolute triumph. Helen, thanks so much for coming today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So our first, co our first order of business is our cocktail, which yes. we have named Slugger's <laughs> Big Apple Sangria. Oh, I love it. Yes. Um, and <laughs> in Ingrid's you, honor. In Ingrid's <laughs> honor, yes. This is, um, you'll read the book and you'll find out why, uh, w what the significance of Slugger is. But we thought it would be a very nice fall cocktail um, so if you would like to just sure. slosh a little bit of champagne right. in there. I'd love to do the honors. Yep. Don't worry okay. if it spills. Okay. Just any and don't which worry way. about the amount? Don't or? worry about the amount. Okay. The recipe is on our website so you can get quantities. But this is, okay. you know, if you love champagne and you put more in, if you, I, if you only like uh, a little bit of fizz. Yeah. Who doesn't love champagne? So. Right. <laughs> okay. okay, perfect. Okay. And then give it a little bit of a swizzle. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Okay, and you can steep the apples if you're making it at home. You can um, steep them and then eat them afterwards. And would you like to do the honors? Sure, we can sure. Pour a little bit here. Yes, and these apple or slices drop. are so pretty as garnish. Yes. So. Here. Okay. okay. Yep. Here, I'll take that. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Yep. And lovely. Oh, it smells Wonderful. delicious. It really yes. does. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Chin chin. Give it a go. Mm. Mm. Lovely. Yeah. Mm. Crisp and dry. Lovely. Okay. So, the partner track. Congratulations. Well, thank you this so much. This is a real achievement. I thank was you so much. Literally, from page one, mm -hmm. it was absolutely compelling. So, tell us, first of all, what's mm -hmm. the story about? Um, so, the partner track is the story of a uh, young Asian American female attorney, mm -hmm. the year that she is up for partner at a very um, high-end, prestigious international law firm, um, and uh, for which she has been groomed you know, for this for quite a number of years. Right. Um, and it's about the uh, ways that politics within the firm and race, gender, and class, mm -hmm. um, and just difference, just mm -hmm. uh, the status of being an outsider mm -hmm. or a fish out of water mm -hmm. can complicate um, the kind of ascent up the corporate ladder for young women. So can you give us a specific example of mm -hmm. a complication? What, what would make it hard? Um, well, uh, she is someone who sort of occupies two, at least two different, um, quote, I guess, outsider roles. Mm -hmm. um, not only is she a woman, mm -hmm. you know, at this um, quite male-dominated uh, mergers and acquisitions law environment, right. um, but she also is a minority. She's a racial minority. She's mm -hmm. um, you know Asian American, mm -hmm. and I have always been very very interested in this juxtaposition um, of uh, people who occupy not one but du Two. double yes. kind of outsider status. Yes, and um, so that is what I was trying to do was to tell the story of. Um, specifically, a young woman of color's mm -hmm. journey in mm -hmm. corporate America. Right, um, and. How, you know, uh, it's said that truth, the, the most um, near the bone truth is to be found in fiction. Yes, so, I believe that. <laughs> yes, I think that, that um, I was very interested in the fact that you began to write this as essays and then That's changed right. to fiction. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes. Um, so a lot of people ask me, well, how much of the book is autobiographical? Right. Um, yeah. And, you know, and, and certainly... I uh, have practiced, you know, corporate law. Mm -hmm, I am mm -hmm. a, you know, Chinese American woman, um, and uh, but but the book is, you know, decidedly fiction. The book is, you know, very much a novel. Um, it's true that I did begin writing um, nonfiction essays yes. because I knew I knew very much that I wanted to write about. Uh, this theme yeah, of what it was something like, to say you know, to be to yeah. be a young woman of color in corporate America. That mm -hmm. is what I wanted to. Yes, that's what I yes. you know wanted to write about. Um, and so I thought I would just collect anecdotes because so many of the um, 
so many of the experiences that I and many of my colleagues were experiencing in various components of cor corporate America, actually not just law firms, right, but right. consulting firms, the financial industry, right. um, you know, just banks. Uh, a lot of the experiences were remarkably similar when, when we would share them in private. So you were so, collecting anecdotes so was, and you were yes. putting them into essays and yes. then did someone say to you this needs to be fiction? Yes, hmm. actually a very wise agent um, who ultimately did not, you know, who ultimately turned down my book. Is that one um, that was a little different title? Because yes, it was a, yeah. a long time, it was over 12 years ago. Yes. Um, had said, you know, I can't represent this book because I don't think that it can sell as a collection of just nonfiction essays from an unknown, you know, 25-year-old yes, toiling away at yeah. a law firm. I just can't, right. I'm not going right. to be able to sell it. Right. However, he said, I really want you to continue with this project because he was very, um, he's very kind. Yeah. And, and, and Well, it's and, important work. Well, it's important. I, I yeah. agree with you that it's the first book that I'm aware of of its kind. You know, you've talked about in interviews the oh, fact that mm -hmm. there. Tell us about the other kinds of Asian American or immigrant stories that sure. you've read and what you wanted to do with this. One of the problems I think that I had um, initially getting agents uh, interested in in taking on this particular project was no one really um, knew how to how to pitch it or market yes. it or position it because right. it it. Um, it does not neatly fall into any category or genre that they yes. were previously familiar with. Yes, yeah. So a lot of the feedback that I would get, and by the way, I got a, a lot of um, quite quite useful and and thoughtful um, feedback from, from these agents who were turning yeah. my, yes, <laughs> were yes, turning that my, be my the book case. down, yeah. in, and I really appreciated it so much because yeah. it helped me you know, formulate um, and, and have this book evolve. So were um, you sending it out as essays and that's yes, when you got uh -huh. this I got, feedback? Right, an initial right. round of feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when this one particular agent had said, you know what, I think that you should be trying this as fiction. I think uh -huh. you should do this as a novel. Mm -hmm. He said you would be far likelier to sell this as a novel mm -hmm. than as a bunch of disjointed, yes. uh, you know, from just someone essays unknown. from someone who doesn't have, right. is, is not already known. Yes. Um, and he said, and your writing is so strong and the mm -hmm. themes are so kind of, you know, important and timely that I think you really should continue with the book, but just do it as fiction. Yes. And that turned out to be the smartest, wisest, just best piece of advice I could have gotten. So this has been timely for 12 years. That says <laughs> well, something, don't you think? Yes. Yes. It, it says that we don't have enough good, you know, thought and writing about uh, diversity in corporate America, I think. And so what was so, the book that you wanted to see on the shelves that wasn't there for you? Right. So um, after, actually, after mm -hmm. I got that, that great advice, mm -hmm. try this, try your hand at fiction. Um, I signed up for, you know, a number of fiction writing classes um, in, uh, in the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them was at the Asian American Writers Workshop. And my homework assignment for that class became the seed for this novel. Um, I'm really lucky I signed up for that <laughs> class. Um, and, you know, but so then now that I had it as fiction, and when I um, had worked up, you know, a, a fairly rough first draft, but, mm. but enough of a critical mass that I could start showing it to, to some people mm -hmm. who worked in publishing, mm. um, Again, I got a lot of kind of useful, meaningful <laughs> feedback, but, but even as fiction, people didn't quite know how to market this novel huh. initially. Hmm. Um, a lot of agents said, you know, I love the character, the themes you're writing, but just who, how would I pitch this? What right. is the pitch in terms of who is the audience right. for it's this? It's not a romance per right. se. It's not, it's a, not right. a rags to riches. Yes. It's not. Yes. Right. So, um, so, so some of the questions that I got asked about it were, well, your protagonist is a young um, Chinese American woman. So, is it an ethnic novel? Which, by the way, I don't even know how useful the label ethnic novel actually is. Yeah. But people tend to use that. So, um, so, so, but it's not a normal ethnic novel because nobody goes back to China. There are no arranged marriages. It's not. It's not right. focused on right. truly. It's not fitting it's that not formula. Focused yeah. on a soul searching trip to an ancestral village. There's nothing like that in the whole book. Um, so they weren't sure. Okay, so it's not an ethnic novel. Um, there are, you know, there's um, office politics and banter, flirtatious banter between colleagues, mm -hmm. and you know, there's a love interest and um, and struggles with uh, bosses and colleagues. So is it chiclet? 
you know, but it wasn't quite Which chiclet not. either. No. Um, because, well, uh, one of the many reasons was that in this uh, novel, the protagonist is already quite senior and successful and not a 24 year old you know, assistant or you That know, was other. one of the things I mm-hmm. loved about this and mm-hmm. for writers out there, um, it's a real, it's a skillful thing to do to take a character who's high achieving and have her still be sympathetic. Oh, which you thank you for saying that. That yes. was something I yeah. struggled with for the book and so thank you for saying that. Yes, she's um, very sympathetic and, mm-hmm. and you did it in such an organic way. Oh, thank you. Um, but I'm, I'm not a fan of the low self-esteem, <laughs> The befuddled old 24 year old editorial system. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I really very much wanted to avoid that. The, the trouble that I was having over the course of 12 years with all of those rejections I was getting was listen, how do we pitch this? Yes. We know how to market yeah. Amy Tan. Yes. We know how to market John Grisham. Yes. And we know how to market Lauren Weisberger. Mm-hmm. We do not know how to market Amy Tan Grisham Weisberger. <laughs> you know? Right, that that right, right, truly right. was kind of the, the problem. But luckily, then I hooked up with my current, you know, agent and my, you know, wonderful editor and and you know the team at St. Martin's Press who really got it. Yes. And I'm just so happy with how things, you know, ultimately worked out because this is just a book that I'm so proud of and it really is um, the book that I thought was missing from bookstore shelves. Yes. Um, it's the book that I would have wanted to read yes. when I was a young associate at yes. that corporate law firm. Yes. So. Um, one of the things that first grabbed me about it was the revelation of what it's like inside um, a corporate attorney's firm where they mm. have the pressure to keep billable hours up yes. and how uh-huh. the, the truth of what goes on there. Have you had any backlash? From that, I have not. No one said anything. I have had no backlash. In fact, what has been one of the happiest and most thrilling surprises to me since publication of this book is um, how warm and enthusiastic and positive the response to my book has been from the legal community and from the greater business community. Um, (laughs) Frankly, I think maybe not only did it come as a surprise to me. I think it may also have come as a surprise to some to 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 my agent and publisher because um, at the t- before publication of this book, you know, we had had many you know marketing conversations, mm. and uh, people had had thought, well, you know, do you think do you fear any backlash because your novel is not exactly a uh, walking advertisement to go into corporate law for women, um, and I said, well, I'm not sure that I fear. Backlash because well, it's a mixture. Right. Just it, because the mm-hmm. the um, the description of power, mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. think, is very well done. And, and and I'm very very interested in ideas about um, women and ambition mm-hmm. in particular. Yes. That is a theme that I very very much wanted to address with this novel. Yes, um, I think that women's often women's relationship to ambition and uh, professional power and success is so fraught and so complicated. Yes, and has to be patted into a pretty little shape so that people don't <laughs> mind it. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. And so that is something that I write about in the book as well. Um, but, uh, but, uh, you know, but getting back to your, your previous question, we weren't sure that there would be backlash necessarily, but we did not expect that people would, you know, far from having backlash, people would actually embrace it and invite me mm. to come speak about the issues in my book to their current um, attorneys. So why do you think <laughs> and, that is? Why do you think there's such an interest? Um, because, I, uh, you know, I don't know that uh, there had been other stories about, um, you know, the experiences of non-traditional um, candidates who find themselves in this corporate world and what mm. it's like for them mm. um, and the challenges you know that they face and by the way the challenges are very very nuanced and subtle yes I do not mean to say that things were you know are so blatant or you know yes. system, yeah. system, systematic in fact the opposite is true it's yes. a very nuanced and subtle yes and so that must experience. have been difficult. and that's why it's harder to Get at. Yes, yes, and it must have been difficult in terms of plotting a novel yeah. <laughs> to come up with right. something that was that realistic was and believable. clear enough to have an impact exactly. and still be, you know, the verisimilitude that yeah. you want. Yeah. Yeah. You're so right. It was very hard to come up with 
plot for this I book. can imagine. Very hard. I did read in your article on mm -hmm. the Daily Beast mm -hmm. about the um, law associate from the South who asked mm -hmm. for the A1 source. Mm -hmm. Yes. And mm -hmm. that is included in this. So that was something yeah. that came I did from... actually use that anecdote. And yeah. I found a way to... Yeah. <laughs> and yes. I, I just found that very painful. Yes. Very uh -huh. and really. It's funny. Yeah. Many people have hit on that particular scene and commented on that particular that's scene. Universal. To me. That's universal. Mm -hmm. That's who among us isn't scared of going exactly. to a fancy restaurant and using and the wrong, wrong fork or the wrong knife. So yes. that's easy right. to understand. So, right. so the people who are inviting you now to speak, mm -hmm. I know that you have. You've just explained to me that you have 33 engagements coming up. Right. And that's. Yes. <laughs> and are these people. Um, it, if the old boy network is existing in these mm -hmm. corporations, mm -hmm. it's not the people in those at the top of those old boy networks who are engaging you to come and talk. Is Actually, it someone else within the company? Um, you know, this the speaking engagements have um, kind of been uh, streaming in from quite a quite a varied, very broad um, group. A lot of times, it's uh, for example a women's committee hmm. at um, a large national law firm or a you know Fortune. 100 corporation, or it's the or it's another um, affinity group of employees like the Asian American Employee Network, um, or okay. other business resource groups. Sometimes it's HR or the um, chief diversity officers of mm -hmm. places, mm -hmm. um, and and actually sometimes it is um, no, it is the the top senior uh, management. In fact, I actually very recently got a very um, very kind. Um, message. It was a kind of happy, breathless um, phone call from the marketing director at a top national law firm. And she said, we just sent out our um, event invite for your book talk and we got back over 100 RSVPs. We, wow. This never happens. And our senior partners are so happy with this res client response that we want you to replicate this event in DC and LA, please. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so that so seems to be fascinating. It's, it, it fasc it's fascinating. It's really to touched me and, and surprising. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, um, that was one of the things that I was so struck about when I went online and I mm -hmm. looked at your, your Twitter account, uh -huh. which is. Um, very, very useful. One of the more useful Twitter accounts oh, in terms of sharing information mm -hmm. and also being helpful to young attorneys who mm -hmm. perhaps don't That's understand the written, the rules. The unwritten the code. Unwritten rules. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it oh, really seemed like such a minefield. It is. And that was, um, there are so, so, so many unwritten rules to um, advancement and survival in these corporate environments that I simply did not understand as a, you know, kind of uh, 25 year old fresh out arriving fresh out of law school yeah um, so did you make you know, mistakes and then oh, certainly, reflect on your mistakes is that I how certainly it? did make a lot of, you know a lot of mistakes I think I think a lot of young associates make um, similar kinds of mistakes where you you do think that it's it's all about the billable hour the tyranny of the billable hour and that it's a pure meritocracy and that if I just put my head down if I just keep yes. my head down work 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 yes. bill 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 yes. bill bill do good work yeah, I will be my good work will be rewarded, and of course, good work is rewarded. But it's so much more than that as well yeah. that no one, you know, tells you about because they can't. You know, um, well, it's this just book something does. That you absorb. This this book really does. I mean, I think that it's it's fascinating for so many different reasons. It's you know, gender and race, right? It, two separate but two separate. connected things mm -hmm. within this story. Yes. So, so do you think is it? too idealistic to think that we could ever overcome racism? I don't Do you think, think it's, it's possible? Too, it, I, I don't think that's too idealistic to, to stay, say that. And in fact, honestly, I, you know, so I've been practicing law for 15 years and over that course of time, we have seen a lot of progress made. Yeah. I really do think that. Um, <laughs> despite having written <laughs> Um, this book, I actually am, have a very positive outlook on that. I really do. Um, well, just because I've that, seen no, so much progressive that... change over, just over the 15 years I have been practicing law. And, um, well, I, I think you're you know, a testament to it as well. Oh, the fact yeah. that you've, that you stayed the course and that you, have you broken through the glass ceiling? Is there still a glass ceiling for you to break through? I think that there are still glass ceilings, certainly, mm -hmm. um, for women and minorities and others who, you know, um, who may not uh, you know, arrive 
in the corporate, you know, setting, mm -hmm. totally familiar already with yes, yeah. that kind of world. But for um, you, what mm -hmm. would be your, if there's something stopping you from rising up now, what would that be? Have you just huh. burst through it with this and all this speaking? <laughs> I kind of feel, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I sort of feel that this book is sort of my... Um, uh, ceiling buster. Yeah, you could say, yeah. you could say that it kind of feels that way. I did not want to have any characters in this novel who were perfect. Mm. Every single person in the novel is, is flawed. Yeah. And because that's real life. Yes. <laughs> None of us sure. is perfect. And um, I just wanted to make sure that um, the, actually, actually the Murph perspective, the white male perspective, was also um, sympathetic. You know, right. right. In, yes, in this yes. book. He, that was important. I didn't yes. want there to be any sort of. Yes. Um, you know, kind of flat, two-dimensional yes. type character. No, I thought that your treatment of him as a character was mm -hmm. um, particularly well done. Oh, thank you. Because it wasn't overwritten, mm -hmm. but it was completely understandable. Oh, thank um, you. Why he took the actions that he mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with he very was, he was briefly. a very very fun character to write. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so. There um, and a great sense of humor. Some of the slights that she endures mm -hmm. are so outrageous. Mm -hmm. um, were they that outrageous? Um, so, for example, being mm -hmm. called a little lady. Oh, yes. The, would, I mean, would that but, actually have yes. happened? I, I think that that happens to a lot of women in the workplace. Um, less so now, mm -hmm. but certainly um, more frequently back 15 years ago when I started practicing. Right. It's mind-boggling. Um, it's it's mind just mind-boggling. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, and the experience of um, uh, walking into a boardroom alongside my paralegal who is a tall, blonde, um, you know, 24 year old and having the client assume that that's the lawyer and I'm the paralegal that certainly has happened to many women lawyers as well I would um, be so furious <laughs> were you furious um furious yes but you when you point it out no one seems you know it, it's it's at that point it would that was a fairly um you know commonplace thing to have happen right right of all the things that you're doing now, mm -hmm. um, how are you managing all of this? Because let's just let's just run it down. You've launched this. Your book just came out. This just is, came out yesterday. Yesterday was uh, so the that's official pub date, September it was very 2013. Um, you've got to promote this. You have a new baby. How old is your baby? Yeah, he's ten and a half months. Ten and a half yes. months. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's just uh, yeah. You have speaking engagements coming at you thick mm -hmm. and fast. So how are you managing all of this? Um, <laughs> well, so because the, um, there originally had been, you know, this is the first novel from an, un, you know, an unknown writer. So there had been no, no book tour planned, none, nothing I had been, that's you know, planned. Typically, that's there typically, are no book tours right, exactly, anymore exactly, anyway, exactly. unless you're a big name. Exactly. Know. So nothing had been planned. And so my plan was that, okay, this book is going to launch on September 17th, and um, my favorite, you know, local independent bookseller is going to have this nice, you know, party, maybe with some wine, and I'll have, you know, like, my friends. You know, 20 friends gather, yeah, mm -hmm. and that'll be great. Um, when somehow, you know, just through word of mouth uh, buzz, law firms and companies started booking dates for me to come and address, you know, um, on a large scale, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, do basically a diversity themed book talk mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. Word spread and soon the calendar started getting out of, a little out of control. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, <laughs> I panicked a little bit. I had some, you know, some sleep to, sleepless nights thinking, oh yeah. my goodness, yes. how, how am, am I, I going, going to, to, I have a 10 and a half month old, how am I going to juggle being a new mom mm -hmm. with my full time um, legal career uh, at Time Inc and just life, just life stuff as well, on top of this mm -hmm. book launch and all mm -hmm. of these speaking engagements that people seem to be booking fast and furious. And obviously I wasn't complaining about any no, of this of course, good fortune, these are good problems, but yes. I just realized there just wasn't, this is my childhood dream. Mm. It was it was coming true. To and be I, a writer. And I, yes, yeah. and I realized that if I did not give it my all, if I did not give this book launch my full and complete best best, best, best effort I possibly could give, yeah. then I would, I would regret it for the rest of my life. Yeah. So I realized that. And so I am very lucky in that um, where I work, I happen to work at a, you know, a media company and mm -hmm. they know a thing or two about okay, they nurturing creativity yeah. Yeah. and 
you know, um, have a lot of employees uh, with creative dreams. Mm -hmm. And I was very, very, very lucky in that um, my bosses at work said we can give you we can give you the time off so that you can do this book launch properly. Um, and you you mentioned creativity, so um, we were talking before about one surprising thing that viewers mm -hmm. or readers might not know. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about the process of writing this. You do almost have to shift mental gears a bit when you all day, you know, I am in my office, I'm practicing law, and then um, in, you know, stolen moments of time, when I get home from work or on weekends or, mm. you know, during my preciously hoarded weeks of vacation, mm. I would try to be a writer. I would try to, you know, play, at, play, at, the, play mm. at the writing life, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's very, very difficult to shift gears from, you know, your normal um, Did your you job have to slow career. down? Did you have to slow well, down? It's, it's just that... Um, you, as a lawyer, and I'm a transactional lawyer, I'm not a litigator, and so it's uh, a lot of negotiation and mm -hmm. drafting of deals, mm -hmm. of contracts, and the, you know, just sort of the very, very um, methodical and exacting language that one uses mm -hmm. when one is putting together, you know, a well-crafted contract mm -hmm. is totally, in, com I, in my view, totally and completely at odds yes. with the creative license, the yes. free and creative yes. license Where that you're one... gathering the wisps of smoke exactly, that, that one yes. needs. Yeah to write a novel. Yes. And so I constantly uh, found myself having to switch mental gears like that. And did you have a ritual of some kind? What did you oh. do? Did you wear a certain pair of sweatpants? Or <laughs> how did you yeah. tell yourself that you were? <laughs> yes, um, yeah. Often, you know, sweatpants, messy ponytail, empty Diet Coke cans scattered everywhere. That's my writing MO. In a particular so, spot? Or did that not matter? The most productive writing times I found I needed to re truly get away from um, New York. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. And yeah. so I would uh, just hoard my weeks of vacation from, you know, mm -hmm. uh, my job. And I would, I would apply them, I would use them to just hold myself away, you know, somewhere, you know, in the off Where season. Where did you go? Um, actually, one of the most productive writing weeks that I ever gave, gave myself was um, in Provincetown, Massachusetts. Oh. And I I wrote a very, very one of my favorite scenes um, from the book. I wrote in the on the top floor of the Provincetown, Massachusetts Public Library. Was there a tremendous amount of revision? Because yes. the one thing, <laughs> okay, was. because this doesn't sag anywhere. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, um, so I had twelve years for it to gel. <laughs> so um, uh, I this book went through at least three wholesale rewrites. I With literally other people's help. Yes. Or, yeah. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. With writers groups, mm -hmm. writers groups were so tremendously helpful to me because um, because I was, you know, having a, a full time, you know, job the whole time that I was writing this. And um, if I had, if I knew that there were four, you know, other writers who were scheduled to workshop my pages on Tuesday yes. night, yeah. that was the only yes, thing that would get me to send out pages on Sunday night. You yes. Know? Yeah. I, I really needed those externally imposed deadlines on me. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. congratulations so, on, yeah. on developing so both sides Thank of you. the brain so well. Thank That's you great. so much. So it's the partner track. Um, you will be amazed. It's really an inside look into the life of a female corporate attorney in New York. Fascinating stuff. Helen, thank you very much Thank for you coming. so much. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Mm -hmm.